what made you comfortable about coming back and uh, competing again with the Eagles? Yeah, man, it was uh, it was a crazy little process going through free agency. It was a really fun experience, though, kind of getting to, you know, garner, just kind of feel out some interest from other teams and have some opportunities. But I just felt like Philadelphia, I feel like I, you know, the chapter, you know, of that of that book isn't close for me yet. I feel like I still have things to accomplish. And last year, obviously, didn't go the way I wanted it to go with the injury and everything. But, you know, I'm just really excited to get back. I really enjoy uh, the environment, uh, great coaching staff. I think it's a great team. Um, and I just feel like I've developed in that system a while. And I feel like um, I'm just, you know, chomping at the bit to, you know, just keep keep climbing on the journey. So looking forward to it. Nate, Nate at, the end, me, uh, sir. at the end of the season, uh, did you get the sense either from your agent or maybe from the Eagles themselves that you would be re-signing with them? And, and if not, what happened to change that? You mentioned the crazy process. Did you hear yeah, it, I, I, yeah, I was always open, obviously, and uh, to coming back and just open to the whole process. Um, I, I don't know if I was necessarily waiting to hear one specific thing or anything. There was never a door shut on my end or on Philly's end on interest of me coming back. Um, and But, yeah, I just kind of went through the process, was able to talk with my agent. And we were able to communicate with other teams in the tampering period, and and uh, some were exciting. But, I, again, I just kind of felt like Philadelphia um, was the best opportunity to kind of keep growing in my career. And um, I'm just really, yeah, really looking forward to going back. But it was, uh, yeah, just excited to be back. Hey, Nate, what was that interest like from other teams? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, without getting into specifics, without getting uh, into any specifics, it was, yeah, it was, you know, my first time being able to communicate with other teams and hear what they think of me, and some of it was really exciting. Um, But, again, I just feel like in, in the place I am in my career, I feel like, you know, adding another year in a place where I'm, you know, familiar in the system and I know that I could go and if, if ever called upon uh, perform, um, I, I feel like, I just felt like it was the best decision for me and without, you know, trying to do too much or obviously I want to be a starter someday. I want to play in this league, um, but I understand that it's a process to get there and you have to, you know, get on the field and, um, you know, obviously the injury kind of, I don't see it as a setback as much as just a little, you know, a little hiccup, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I just felt like Philadelphia was, you know, I never wanted to leave, per se. I, I still feel like I uh, always felt wanted in Philadelphia and always felt like uh, there were great opportunities and, you know, just want to continue to contribute to the great organization. Nate, given the circumstances with the coronavirus and the fact that there probably aren't going to be any spring workouts, uh would it have been a lot more difficult to have signed with another team and to try to assimilate with that, with that team? Than yeah. You know, be... that really is uh kind of, that's a good question. That really kind of picked up more so after the decision uh, that I made, but I think it definitely helps, you know, I mean, going back to a place where I'm familiar, if, you know, all OTAs are canceled, who knows how that all happens or what all happens with that. I think it definitely helps having been in the system the last couple of years. Uh, but I wouldn't say that that was like a main driving force in my decision-making process by any means. Um, but yeah, it definitely helps and gives me a little bit more comfort knowing, you know, if, if, if I had to, I could play a game here really soon in Philadelphia and feel comfortable, you know, spitting out the verbiage and connecting with teammates and all, all the little intricacies and nuances that it takes to, you know, perform at a high level. Nate, with the perspective of, of being here for three years, how would you, how would you welcome a competition if maybe the Eagles were to draft somebody in April or maybe bring, bring in a veteran down the road? How do you feel you would you would fare in a competition, and how would you welcome that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the NFL is obviously a meritocracy, as, as people have said before, and it's, it's really what have you done for me lately? What are you doing at each step? You have to just keep proving yourself, and you have to keep improving. Um, and I don't know, I, I, I definitely have a ton of confidence um, if I'm ever in a situation where I'm head on head competing with somebody, uh, I have a lot of confidence in myself. I haven't ever really had that opportunity. So I'm really looking forward to, to that if that comes. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely just think that, um, my knowledge of the system, I just think, and 
and my ability. I've never been more confident in it. I just think I just have to kind of get thrown out there into a game, and uh, whether it's more preseason or ever in a regular season game, because um, you know it's it's interesting. I can do as well as I want in practice, and you know there are obviously a bunch of areas I want to continue improving, but. Uh, the crazy thing about quarterback especially is you never really know about a guy until they're thrown in there, and the only way to get experience is to get experience. So it's kind of just uh, hurry up and, and wait, it almost feels like sometimes. But, um, yeah, just definitely prepared. And, I mean, I'm grateful for the opportunities I've been given and uh, for the opportunity to come back and welcome any any upcoming challenges. As a follow-up to that, Nate, have they given you assurances that you are the number two, or are you anticipating that type of competition this summer? Um, yeah, I don't want to get into specifics, but uh, I'm very excited about the opportunity to come back and feel really uh, feel really good about coming back to Philadelphia and just excited to get back to work. Hopefully, it resumes here soon. There have been what, are you, uh, what are you doing in the in the off season to kind of prepare as you might have to? you know, work without an OTA session or an OTA period in mandatory minicamp? Yeah, again, that's a great question. It's kind of unprecedented right now. Uh, I've been I've been training the last couple, you know, really the last month to two months uh, pretty hard. Um, but then now all the gyms are shut down. So got a little makeshift gym in, in my garage, which has been helpful. And then uh, staying with my family. So I've got two older brothers who – one played receiver at Brown, one played tight end at Nevada and then in the NFL for a little bit. So I've got two nice targets that are under my quarantine, which is perfect. So I'm able to throw to them a little bit, but it's, it's hard. It's kind of a day by day uh, trying to figure out how to keep developing and kind of keep getting in shape this off season without the full, you know, full weight room, full workout, all this stuff. But then benefit too is, you know, just kind of trying to watch as much film as film as I can and try to, you know, just be on top of it. But again, it's I mean, you ask anybody, it's pretty unprecedented. So still trying to figure Nate, all that stuff out. Nate, it's Howard Nate, asking. Been some signif- uh, it's Howard asking. What conversations have you had, uh, if any, with Carson? Yeah, I mean, Carson's obviously a great friend of mine. Uh, so we we when we talk, we generally just talk more about you know family and life and our faith and things like that. So it's been good, man. I'm excited for him. Uh, he, him and his wife are expecting uh, here soon. So really excited for him. But, yeah, he, he's doing well and just it's been, he's a good friend. So it's good, good talking to him. There have hey, been Nate, some significant been some changes, changes on the offensive, on the offensive coaching, coaching staff. staff. Uh, Nate, Sorry, there have been some time. significant changes on the offensive coaching staff. In a in a, in a a article on the uh, – Eagles website you had talked to Chris McPherson and talked a little bit about Rich the impact you think Rich Scangarell is going to have on this offense because of uh, his association with Kyle Shanahan can you kind of expand on that a little bit yeah you know I, uh, I'm really excited about the addition of Rich obviously I haven't been able to really talk with him or anybody about the scheme but in just studying him and kind of looking him up and knowing his tree that he worked for Kyle Shanahan and you know, has familiar, familiarity with Sean McVay, who I got to work with in Washington my first year, who I think the world of. Um, I just love those offenses and how, you know, they marry up the run game and the play action and the boots and things like that. So really looking forward to getting to know Rich and talking scheme with him when, when things kick back up. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I think hopefully I'm excited it should bring like a breath of fresh air to the offense and Obviously, I feel like I know the offense, you know, Doug's offense pretty well, but I'm excited to hopefully add some different perspectives to it and just keep growing it, and hopefully it fits my skill set pretty well, which, you know, I I think hopefully it will. Hey, Nate, you kind of talked about experience, and you can only get experience with experience. Have you ever kind of lobbied Doug or anything in that nature and the fact that he's always liked guys who've had game time experience and, and kind of said to him, look, I, you got to give me a chance. Is anything ever <laughs> like that? Uh, no, I never have. And, and I don't really feel like that's my place. I think they all know that I'm very confident myself and the way I act, the way I talk, the way I practice. Um, but, you know, I get it. Um, and, you know, it's just crazy how fast everything changes, you know, as a player, 
you know, if, if you sit at the bench for a couple of years and then uh, get thrown into a game and have a good game, then forever you, okay, he can play. So I'm just, you know, just trying to stay ready and stay, uh, you know, have a refreshed outlook and all this stuff. So when I do get an opportunity, um, whenever that is down the road, uh, I'm able to do it to the best of my ability because, you know, you can, again, look as good as you want in practice. And But that's, you know, no complaints. I'm grateful to be in the NFL and have these opportunities. That, um, but really looking forward to getting that opportunity and able to turn the page on, on me as a player. We'll take a few more for Nate if you have them. Nate, a few Nate. weeks ago you said this was your first chance to, to, to hear what other teams thought of you and to kind of get that feedback in the process. What did you hear from, 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 from the other teams? Yeah, it was uh it was good and without getting obviously to too many specifics, I, I just felt like you know, it was kinda good for my self awareness because there sometimes I'll watch film and of myself or self assess and I'm like, Ooh, I'd like to get better here or I and man, I feel like I'm pretty good here. Uh, you know, obviously improve it and stuff, but there are just some parts of my game that and I felt like these other teams really noticed, so kinda gave me more confidence too to realize that it wasn't going unnoticed. Does that make sense? And, uh, um, and yeah, so it, it was kind of exciting just to hear other people who have no bias, who have no, you know, who, who haven't really been around me just from what I've put in games, what they were able to say about things I was doing. So it gave me a lot of excitement and motivation to, you know, keep, keep proving myself and uh, continue on this journey. Hey, Nate, when you self-assess, what are some of the things you've improved on most in your three years you've been in Philly? Yeah, uh, I think I've said it a couple times before, but I think number one is I think I'm a late bloomer um, just in terms of catching up with my body and, you know, in terms of speed, quickness, uh, physical development, strength, all this stuff. I think I'm a different player than obviously I was coming out of college, which is exciting. Um, But I also think just my knowledge of the game and uh, what I've really enjoyed with, you know, Doug and press the last couple of years is just all the situational awareness that we talk about in situations. You know, it's more than just, you know, knowing it's third down and trying to get the first. You know, there's so many more layers to it. Well, are you know, are we in field goal range? Is it okay to take the check down, be in fourth down and kick a field goal? You know, are is our defense playing really well where we can, you know, punt and, you know, give the defense a, a shorter field or a longer field to work with or whatever. So just all these little situations, I think I've started to, you know, compile and keep in some more, like, organized notes that I'm really looking forward to using that just situations and understanding and schemes and things that uh, I feel like I've really grown my inventory and then understanding, like, pressures and how it all works together and, um, you know, getting – so say you get a pressure or early in the game you kind of just maybe want to get some completions to – to some guys, get them confident, get them in the flow of the of the game, but also get the, you know, the offensive line settled in without having to drop back and, you know, stand in the pocket for a while, um, which I was probably guilty of in college because I always wanted to make the big, big throw. But sometimes just letting the game come to you, and it's sometimes counterintuitive and it's hard to do, but as you keep doing it, you realize how how holistic – of an approach to the game that can be and how, how beneficial it is to everyone. So a lot of stuff like that, I'd say. Nate, you've uh, had the chance to work with Press Taylor for a couple of years now. The Eagles uh, added passing game coordinator to his title of quarterbacks coach already. Just having worked with Press, what do you think he can kind of bring to the table in an even bigger role on the coaching staff? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think the world of Press um, – I, I just love how his brain works. He's always looking to get better. He's so organized. He's so detail oriented and uh, you know, he's just a good dude, but uh, I think he brings a ton of great ideas. I mean, I don't think many people watch more film than he does and understands more schemes and is always looking on how to improve and things like that. And he comes up with great ideas and it's such a good um, dynamic of communication with him too. And um, yeah, I just, I think he's just going to keep climbing the ladder until he's a head coach someday um, if he wants to be. So, yeah, really looking forward to having press with, a, you know, a larger role. 